Hi, hola, my name is Ranger Freddy Gutierrez Fernandez Ramirez. I'm a park guy at Saguaro National Park, and I've been with the National Park Service as an employee for about five years. Sawar National Park is one park divided in two districts. You have the West District and the East District. It's about 45 minute to 60 minute drive between both districts. While Sawar National Monument was established in 1933, in 1994, Congress elevated Saguaro National Monument to a national park status. Uh, Saguaro National Park is devoted to protecting our namesake, which is all around us and its surrounding ecosystem. This is a very unique desert. Uh, it's the most biodiverse desert in North America. People come out here from all over the planet just to see the saguaro because they've seen it in movies, they've seen it in cartoons. It's a symbol of the Southwest. Uh, you, there's old Western movies where you see the saguaro cactus. You only experience saguaro cacti in the Sonoran Desert. When you see the saguaro in person, it's difficult to comprehend their size and age and how unique they are. When you look at the saguaro, each one is unique. Each one has its own personality. Um, I never get tired of seeing the saguaro cacti because every time I come out here, I see something different. And I'm still amazed by this area. Hopefully I never lose uh, my ability to be amazed by the Sonoran Desert. The saguaro is just is one of the most studied plants in the whole planet. And there's still so much more we're trying to learn about them. So they're also like a mystery. So I never get tired of seeing them. And they're like people. When you go out there during the sunset and you wait until you see the silhouettes of the saguaro, you see it looks like there's whole families and groups of people out there interacting or picnicking or hiking in the desert. It's, they're just so fun to look at. The East District is more diverse. It's a more mountainous range. And it's like driving from northern Mexico to central Canada. You pass all those biomes in the park. And that's pretty amazing, pretty impressive. And that's why it's most, one of the most biologically diverse ecosystems in the whole planet. And they're also called the Sky Islands because there's these mountain ranges surrounded by a sea of desert and grasslands. For being a desert, we're a very lush desert. It's a very green desert you see around me. Um, it's not just dry and barren. For example, here we have Palo Verde trees. They're small trees. Right now they're more like shrub-like, but Palo Verde trees are our state trees. And Palo Verde is a Spanish name that means green stick. And since there's a lot of flowers going on right now, or they're starting to bloom, sometimes we have this uh, impulse to try to pick a flower, but don't do that. That's not allowed in Saguaro National Park, but everything's protected. And if you start doing that, and we get over 1 million visitors a year here in the park, imagine if every visitor is just picked out a flower, we would run out of flowers. And Flowers are actually pretty uh, essential for, for the habitat. A lot of birds, insects, and other pollinators rely on the, on the flowers. For being a desert, we do have a lot of species, not only of plants, but also of wildlife. There's over 200 uh, species of birds that have been documented in the park. So you'll see lots of, of those around here. Uh, we are in Arizona, so we're known for having a lot of reptile species like lizards, tortoises, and snakes. In the park, there's about 50 species of reptiles. And in mammal-wise, we have about 70 species of mammals. So there's lots of wildlife you can experience out here. Typically, the best time to see wildlife is either in spring or during the monsoon season when it rains out here. When it rains, all the plants, all the animals get super happy, so everything's pretty active. And that's my favorite time of year in the Sonoran Desert. Some of the activities you can enjoy here in the park is there's, since it's divided into two districts, there's a drive in each district. If you go to the east side of the park, there's the Cactus Forest Drive, which is eight miles paved, very popular for uh, cycling. In the west district, you got the Bajada Loop Drive, which is five miles unpaved. It's gravel, it's graded, most cars can, can, can go through it. Uh, other hiking activities, there's over 170 miles within both districts of the parks. From You can take an easy short stroll in a paved, wheelchair accessible trail that's flat and easy to a long day trek into the wilderness in the east district of the park. So there's a lot of options for hiking here in the park. Some of our accessible trails are the Desert Ecology Trail uh, found in the east district and the Desert Discovery Trail found in the west district of, of the park. And then each visitor center has a garden walk which also is wheelchair accessible and there's interpretive signs so you're learning about the plants and animals that call this area home. 
There's backcountry uh, camping opportunities in Saguaro National Park East. You have to get a permit. There's six designated uh, campsites in the wilderness. You have to go to recreation.gov to um, make your reservations there. There's no camping at all in the west district of the park. And actually in the whole park, there's no car camping or RV camping. Luckily, we're next to the city of Tucson, Marana, and other nearby communities. And we're surrounded by public lands. So you have RV parks, county parks, state parks, forest land, BLM land, where you can do uh, camping, either tent camping, RV camping. In some of those sites, you can even do dispersed camping for free as well. So yeah, the summer is pretty hot out here and the winter is pretty comfortable for hikers. So our busy time of year is from November through April, especially February and March are our busiest times. Signal Hill Picnic Area is a popular de destination in the park. The round trip walk is about a third of a mile round trip and you'll see hundreds of petroglyphs etched into the rock by the Hohokam, which are the ancestors of the Tahana Atom. Tahana Atom people are the, our neighbors. This is their, their ancestral land here where we're standing. And if you go to Signal Hill there, at the, the hill with all the boulders, you'll see a spiral, which is a very popular petroglyph. And if you stay there for the summer solstice, you'll see the silhouetted like arrow or point going towards, towards the center of the, of the spiral. And while the rest of the, of the rock is bathed in, in light, um, you get a glimpse of the past. And the views are amazing also for a sunset. 